Hey guys, welcome back. Don't mind this background, this is part of another video. It's just that uh, today's video is about a hot glue gun and originally I thought it might be part of another video of different smaller projects but it was just so long and interesting that I thought it deserves its own video. Okay, here's something else. Something that will be really quick. This heat gun, it's broken. And because it's broken, the mechanism is broken, this part on the back should move when I press it, but there's just no resistance. And I think something from the plastic parts inside are broken, and I don't have a 3D printer, so I can't repair this thing. This might be a really quick part of this video. So, let's open the thing up and... Oh! That's interesting. This one needs another, uh, or again, this special screwdriver. And we're in. So, let's remove the top part. Okay. What do we have here? This? Oh, yeah, that's broken. Okay. And there's the part that broke off. Now the question is, could I glue this together? Oh no, that's not going to work. And the reason is, this is where uh, the force is applied. When you press this down, this little part that broke off has to grab onto here and push the, the whole mechanism forward. And there's a small underneath, I can feel this. This will also feed in the, um, the hot glue. And the pressure of the spring and the, the hot glue itself has to be pressed into this heating element over here. Oh, this is not going to work. I can't glue it firm enough to be able to use it again. So this will be scrapped. Now, how does this work? We have this part over here, pretty obvious. We push it in, push it in, the arm goes up, and this direction, this whole part moves forward. We have a spring in the back over here. move it back out. So have no use for this. The spring is something nice. The mains cable nice. And this. Okay. These are interesting mains cables. Oh I see. They are these are like steel cables. They are really stiff. This is not normal. This is something never felt, never have seen. I mean, yeah, cables like these, I've seen them, but they are so stiff, they are... I think they're steel. Makes sense because this is a heating element. So then we have this rubber part on the back, and that also has to be heat resistant, so definitely a keeper. Don't know what this could be used in the future for something. We have some hot glue left into the nozzle and this ring that is also used on like keychains interesting okay let's see can i can i yes i can so this is a small clamp and we have this top part i think this can be removed yeah it moves and this presses the actual heating element uh, down in here and so it can heat up the whole nozzle. And that's the heating element completely cased in... I thought it might be this heat resistant tape. Oh, I just broke it. Oh no! Oh! This fell out. Was it in between these two? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that's a shame. Shoot. 
they just destroyed the heating element. So this... No, that did not break off here, or did it? No, that doesn't fit. Okay, so... Weird. Oh. Uh, okay. And this is the heating element. And I assume this part sat in between. But I don't know for sure. That's really unfortunate. Hmm. I will definitely keep it and take a look at this part later on. But I will separate the main sleet with the heating element. Oh, and by the way, this thing is zinc. Same as this part. This is steel. And these I have no idea. But this is definitely zinc. So I decided to keep the nozzle part. We'll keep the heating element. I just thought this housing could be used for a screwdriver project, electric screwdriver or something else. So I will also keep this. Yesterday to today, I was thinking about a few things and one of them was this uh, heating element that I broke. And the thing is, when I'm tired, I lose mental capacity. And I just cut the wire without testing the heating element. I don't know if this still works, so what I'm going to do is reassemble it, see if there's enough resistance with a multimeter for um, mains voltage, and then apply mains voltage measured temperature and hope that it still works. So this is not going to work. I will just use some heat resistant tape to hold it together and then insert it into this uh, heat resistant stuff. Just like that. Good. So I have to be really careful not to pull it out. But this should be fine. And now I'm going to measure resistance. And if we have a connection and the resistance is high enough, this should be fine to connect it to mains voltage, because that's what it was designed for. Now, uh, what am I doing? It's not continu continuity test. So let's see. Oh, voltage. Right. Resistance. One kilo ohm resistance. Okay, quick calculation. So, U equals R times I. So voltage equals resistance times current. I want to know the current, which means we divide the voltage by resistance. You need 40 volts divided by 1000 ohms is 240 milliamps. This means that I can safely connect it to mains voltage. Soldering is done. And just to trigger everyone, I connected the blue wire to the brown one and the brown one to the blue connection. You're welcome. Now, next thing to do is grab my thermometer and a thermocouple. Like this one over here. And the thermometer. Another test. The tip is currently at 200 degrees Celsius. I can't touch the tip because there's solder on the tip and this changes the reading of one of these thermocouples. The way they work is they have a really small uh, thermal mass on the front which changes its resistance and if I add additional thermal mass by the solder this changes the reading and the accuracy, so I'm not going to do that. I already destroyed one of these. Well, thermal cables are not that expensive, but I'd rather not do that. So, what I'm going to do instead is have it on the outside, another piece of tape holding it in place, and then activating the heating element. And we will observe the temperature and see what 
is actually the maximum temperature. I will try to have the thermocouple in the middle of the heating element and just tape it down like this. So guys, this is really dangerous and I'm not recommending you do that. However, if you do, take as much caution as possible. Yeah, I think that will do. It's turned off and just the fuse, I think it's a 2M fuse. So hopefully this is fine. Now we have to wait. Oh, and by the way, maybe I should turn it on. Fine line of smoke coming out of this end over here. Now the heating element seems not to rise any further. We are at 144 to 145 degrees Celsius. And now it's climbing again. Temperature is not really stable. Essentially, we are at a temperature of four of 144 degrees Celsius to 146 degrees Celsius. I think this is enough as a test, and. I will definitely keep it now that it's uh, again working and now I can cut the wire off and store them separate. Heating element still works and I'm going to store it. Oh, that's hot. So here's a experimental setup uh, to take a closer look at the function of this heating element. And I just finished this experiment and I have to say that my assumption on how this works was wrong. I didn't really tell you guys what I thought would be the case, but here's what I thought. So I thought this uh, has a resistance of approximately one kilo ohms. And let's make a diagram. So we have a uh, resistance measured in ohms, and we have a temperature measured in degrees Celsius. And I thought this uh, might be an NTC where the resistance starts at 1 kilo ohms and just goes down to a certain low point where it stabilizes. And the problem with that is, at this low point, it would just heat up further, further, further. So the heat would just rise even further beyond the point that is needed for hot glue at a point where it would start to burn. So there had to be a different system. And when I did take a look on the internet, I saw that what is supposed to happen was something like this. So when we duplicate this diagram, we have resistance measured in ohms and temperature measured in degrees Celsius. What is supposed to happen is that we have a starting point of let's say again one kilo ohm the resistance should go down and then at a stabilized voltage that is uh, a stabilized temperature sorry that was uh, stupid stabilized uh, temperature it then should rise back up to prevent the element from heating again uh, further and further so the resistance would rise and rise and rise so that the temperature would always be in the range that is needed for hot glue, which is like 140 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. And this is supposed to happen. And we can uh, duplicate this by using a heat gun. And I've got my helping hands over here with the, oh, that's hot, with the heating element insert it back into its nozzle and that is to add thermal mass and also protect the heating element because uh, this thing can only output 300-500 degrees Celsius and I've got my multimeter and the mains cable connected with uh, some crocodile clips to the multimeter so when I 
start to heat up the element, you will see that first the resistance will fall, but at some point it will start to rise back up. Now let's start and take a look if this is true. And by the way, I already tried it and yes, it is true, but I would like to show you guys. And as you can see, suddenly the resistance goes back up, although I'm still heating the element with my heat gun. And this bit of smoke coming off, that's just the glue that uh, just got overheated because I used the 500 degrees Celsius setting of my heat gun to get it low really fast. In reality, this would happen quite fast uh, with the element um, heating itself. You have to keep in mind that the insulation over here also adds some, um, well, insulation, heat insulation, not only electrical insulation, but also heat insulation. And again, now that it cooled back down, the resistance goes down to allow the element uh, to heat back up. Now this is a quite interesting thing and shows that the heating element on its own is self-regulating to get the temperature from 140 to 150 degrees Celsius and it doesn't need any complicated circuit just the main wire going directly into the heating element and I have to say I did not expect this uh, to happen but mainly because I didn't really think about what would be the case if it was just a uh, anti-C and not having a part that goes a PTC curve so essentially the first part of the curve is that of an NTC, negative temperature coefficient resistor, and then we go to a PTC, positive temperature coefficient resistance or resistor, so it's completely self-regulating. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below. Other than that, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!